Hey Trace, do you ever look up at the night sky and wonder what the stars are made of? Nah, but sometimes I wonder what's in between the stars. Whoa. Hey everyone, Amy and Trace with you on D News today, taking a look at the common misconception that space between the stars is a vacuum. Yep, space is not a vacuum, but it's not exactly bursting at the seams either. There is material out there, it's just so incredibly sparse that space is almost a vacuum, even right here in our own solar system. Interplanetary space is actually full of tiny dust particles. These particles are created when asteroids collide, when comets evaporate, and when material is sprayed from the geysers or volcanoes on planets or moons. These particles evolve from radiation, collisions with other particles, and when planets' gravity tugs on them. And it's not just dust out there. Space also contains ions and electrons from the plasma ejected as solar wind. Collectively, this soup of particles is called the interplanetary medium, and we've measured it using various spacecraft, remote sensing techniques like Earth-based observations with telescopes and radar, and we can even collect interplanetary dust caught in our upper atmosphere. Based on scientists' measurements, our solar system contains about five particles per cubic centimeter. Definitely not a vacuum. But close. I mean, for comparison, the air we're breathing right now has three quintillion molecules per cubic centimeter. Because it's around us all the time, we know our interplanetary dust. It comes from our solar system, we've measured it, and we can account for it. Some of it is even left over untouched from the time our solar system first formed. So, when the Cassini spacecraft that's currently orbiting Saturn picked up some dust fragments, scientists got super excited because it wasn't our dust. It was interstellar! Cassini was measuring all kinds of particles native to the Saturnian system when it caught a whopping 36 dust particles that didn't match the dust in Saturn's system, which means those particles came from outside our solar system. This new soup is called the interstellar medium because it's between stars. So cool. Interstellar medium is 99% gas, about three quarters of which is hydrogen and the other quarter helium. The remaining percentage is all the other elements on the periodic table. And get this, those elements, they formed in the cores of now dead stars. I love space. Yeah. Interstellar medium is even more sparse than interplanetary medium. There's only about one atom per cubic centimeter. These interstellar dust particles are extremely tiny, just microns across. They're irregularly shaped and they're mostly silicates, carbon, ice, or iron compounds. And yes, they're left over from dying stars. As stars slowly burn through their available gaseous fuel sources, they give off something you can think of as atomic soot. But that's not to say it's interstellar pollution per se. There's still more than enough material out there to make galaxies and in some spots, the gas is super dense. Yep. All that material from dead stars is recycled into new stars. Huge, cold clouds of molecular hydrogen can sit idle until a nudge makes the structure unstable. At that point, gravity pulls the cloud in on itself, heating and condensing until a new star is born, blowing away material in its energetic birth. On the other end of the star's life, there is often a supernova explosion. This is when the star's gravity becomes too strong and it dies by imploding on itself, bouncing off its own core and exploding. The shock from these imploding explosions can heat the gas in that stellar neighborhood enough to rip electrons from the atoms and the resulting glowing X-ray radiation sends some gas blowing off into intergalactic space. And sometimes particles from crazy interstellar events like these fly into our solar system, which is what the Cassini scientists detected. So even though the space between planets and stars is only populated with a few minute particles of dust in the hands of good scientists, we can learn a ton. I love space. There are all kinds of weird man-made things kicking around in space, too. For a few months, there was even an old spacesuit repurposed as a satellite orbiting the Earth. SuitSat is just one of the weird space stories I get into on my own channel, Vintage Space, so check that out if you are a fellow space nerd like me. It's really cool. The disused spacesuit was dubbed SuitSat-1, and it was fitted with three batteries and an antenna. Then, during a spacewalk on February 3rd of 2006, astronauts and cosmonauts performing an EVA punted the man-shaped and very human-looking spacesuit turned satellite off away from the International Space Station. If you could ask any crazy out there science question, then why don't you? That's what the comments section is for. And make sure you subscribe so you can get the answer. Thanks for watching D News.